You're listening to another Geek Pride podcast. Hi, everybody. Matt Geary here for the Geek Pride podcast, and I'm here with. Hello. It's a blast from the past. A man that we thought was gone. A man that we thought had disappeared forever into the annals of his own podcast. But no, he hath returned. Stronger, more powerful, and a little bit more whispery than we had remembered. Hi everyone, it's Mike Orvis. <laughs> Brilliant, loved it. Epic. Well, I, nice. I thought I thought I'm, I might need to be like a bit more verbose as, a, as I'm padding out where set, you know five guests would normally be. It's just, it's just us on, it's our, me and on the, our loans. Yeah, and um, yeah, this is technically our third of the new old podcast, as it were. But right. um, unfortunately, last um, last week, myself and Sean had a really good conversation. It took us three tries to get it through. Realized yeah. that what we'll do is we'll phone each other because his internet was a bit shit. Right. Uh, and then um, he didn't record his audio. <laughs> So there's basically, if it was not going to be a podcast, it would literally Wallace. just be Matt, it would just be Matt talking to himself. So, so you are still going to put that out then? Yeah, totally, man. <laughs> oh, am I allowed to swear? Like, is it? Are yes. we allowed to swear? Because yeah, yeah. I mean, that's an important factor now. Oh yeah, with the whole YouTube thing. Yeah, like so. So for I, I do, I do stuff for for Geek Pride, and and I do stuff for various other sites, and that's like that's that's something I'm I'm really quite scared about now. Because yeah, obviously, in, on our level currently, it's not a huge impact. But if we were to suddenly start getting a lot more subscribers and things, yeah. then yeah, if they, if for people who are going to make money off this, you know, having to censor yourself, um, it, it sort of kind of takes away from the freedom of being a creator in yeah. my mind. Um, I can understand you. You don't want to fire in sort of like really uncouth sort of rape jokes and such things like that. But yeah, but the th- well, hang on, hang on, that right? Okay, sorry to interject, but the last time I checked, YouTube was a meritocracy. Like the entire point of YouTube is that it's it's this kind of you know it, it operates on a system of up and down votes, or at least it used yeah, to. No, that- so and it and it, and you, videos videos were monetized and things were things were popular because of other people watching them so if people are watching something and then downvoting it then then that's that's democracy in action that's that's content meritocracy that's the point do you know what i mean if if someone is going oh fuck the queen and oh here's a rape joke and here's a here's a horrendous joke about children you know then people are going to see that like this is disgusting if enough people do it enough people like hate it and report it then you know maybe it will get banned or maybe you'll just have an age restriction on it and and that and that restricts the content done Oh, so why do you think why do you think uh, YouTube have done it? Well, look, mate, the, these these rules have always been there. Um, they have always been there. Uh, when when um, uh, me, me and Nick, um, not not on our own, but uh, Nick, who used to used to do uh, some of the podcasting for Geek Pride and was a writer for a bit, um, you know, when we started making YouTube videos together, he's he's such a fucking stickler for the rules, and he went back and forth. Um, you know, uh, with a fine tooth comb over the rules, and he's like, "Yeah, did you know? Actually, we can't swear, we can't do this, we can't make these jokes, we can't do this, or they'll put an age restriction on it, or we can't monetize it." And I was like, oh, "Fuck off! Like, this is ridiculous." Because I was using massively popular YouTubers like the Yogs Cast, and and uh, um, at the time, Puda Pie. Like, dude swears all the time. Um, what? What it turns out is that there is a select group of YouTubers, and if you don't believe me, listen to um, Jim Sterling or the Jim Quisition, as he's known, um, talk about the fact that there are there's a group of YouTubers that are essentially protected by Google to do what the fuck they want. Jenna Marbles being one of them, um, Jim Sterling being one of them. Now, but he's the only one that's really gone. Yeah, yeah, we can kind of do what we want because we're. I've forgotten what they're called, but they're like they're like your top creators. And if they left YouTube, then then you kind of it fucks the website. So. The point I'm making is these rules have always been there. Um, it's just that YouTube have now clandestinely started to enforce these rules. And the reason I say clandestinely is because there was no prior warning. People just woke up one morning who were making money from their videos and suddenly those videos didn't make any money anymore. Hmm. Which is terrifying. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen a few videos um, and obviously... It is worrying, especially if that is your bread and butter. Yeah. Um, 
uh, and I, I could understand maybe going forward you would watch your language or you would make sure because I'm not sure is it like you know if you if you throw in the odd f bomb now and again <laughs> that's that fine but well here's the thing mate. Uh, it's it's completely obtuse. That's the problem. That's why everyone's having a go about it because it's like content that may be deemed offensive. Now, uh, there's a and I wish I knew the name of this YouTuber. So I really apologise, viewers. Um, if you know what it is, then uh, I don't know. Where, where are we on this? Are we on iTunes? What, what are we doing with this? This, this will be on YouTube. Possibly this will be on YouTube. This will be on YouTube. Possibly on iTunes. It okay. depends on views. <laughs> okay, so yeah, we're on YouTube. Um, so you feel free to like write in the comments below of like what what's what's going in. But there was a dude who did essentially a propaganda video for North Korea. Um, it was like a really smiley. It was a YouTuber's video, and and you know what I mean by that. There's a fucking ukulele. Some pricks having a whistle in the background, and <laughs> there's everything's like ah, oh, everything's awesome. Ah, oh, I'm just hanging out with the kids. Oh, everything's so cool. Oh, dude, this is so ra- <laughs> fuck off, right? Like, th- th- but that totally fine because it's portraying North Korea in a positive light. But there are guys who do like news channels, and they're like North Korea's fucked, yo, and here's why. Um, and we might, by me mentioning this, Matt, we might get the video taken down, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, you know, there are rumours, and I, I'm saying that because of the legality of it, that Kim Jong-un is making his workers um, do crystal meth so that they <laughs> so that they work harder, right? What? That's a real thing. That's a real thing. Check it out. Google it, right? I'm saying it's a rumour. It's not a rumour. I'm saying it's a rumour. <laughs> but because, uh, like, if news channels report that and they're not the big guys... Guess what? You're not monetized because that could be considered uh, offensive or spurious. Mm. But it, make as many fucking propaganda videos as you want because so basic, there's a lovely soundtrack. So basically, as I understand it, somebody has to basically make a complaint. There's no or do YouTube? No, just, oh, YouTube right. just kind of scan for it. Yeah, they've oh, got okay. algorithms and and you know the kind of things that are the kind of the tags that are put in and the titles that are put in and right. yeah, people can you know people can can com- can flag it up. But YouTube are kind of scanning for it now. Uh, this content has too many fuck and or buggers. Yes, yeah, exactly. And I'd, I'd say there's, there's something else that's that's kind of scary as well with with this content censoring that's coming around the same time as the. Now look, I, we'll totally get onto some geeky stuff in a minute. It's just like I'm I'm quite I'm feeling quite intelligent. Um, the fucking the way that YouTube is getting censored now and looking at the rise in popularity of a certain presidential candidate um, that ended up on Jimmy Fallon the other night. No way! Was the, it? Yeah, yeah, and, and wasn't ridiculed. Like, it was like he was all part of the fun. All, not like in SNL, where he was kind of the subject of ridicule. Um, this was like everyone was... He was, like, celebrated. He was just another one of the celebrities. And the questions that were being asked, he was being asked, like, just one of the celebrities. There was no artifice. There was no... There was no parody. There was no. Uh, there was no satire in it. He was just there, and then I read the comments. And ladies and gentlemen, the first thing you do, first rule of YouTube Club is don't read the comments. Um, everyone's like, "Oh, Hillary's a liar. Oh, Trump, Trump's the best. Trump's the best." And these are all the comments that are reaching the top. And it seems that you know, if I then went and made an anti-Trump video and went, "Dude's fucking crazy, and he's got tiny hands," um, then. I, my would be downvoted, and yeah. my content would be censored. Well, did you? Um, the Sneaky Zebra guys did a um, Pokemon yeah. uh, parody video. Oh, of, Christ! Trump. And did you see some of the the comments <laughs> and that? I was just like, I'm, I, well, we'll apologise. We're not generally a political sort of kind. We're of really site. not. We're Sorry. not at all. It's just that <laughs> this is a big thing. You know, as, as much as we're in the UK, it, it, it's going to affect the world. Well, yeah. And yeah, this this. You know, so they ha- they took the piss out of them, and the the, the amount of racist, xenophobic, oh, horrible crazy. comments on there, and obviously they were voting down the video and stuff. Yeah. Uh, the vocal minority were basically, you know, causing them problems and stuff. And I was yeah. just I was just like having to restrain myself from some of the stuff. I was just like, I'm not going to get into a fight with somebody who's just not going to see any sense because you 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 can't you can't you couldn't have a debate with somebody like of that of course not no, no they they're literally their mind is set their backs yeah. against the wall because you know people think they're idiots and they, they'll not listen and you know that's it so it's it's insane man absolutely yeah. insane 
Um, I, I'm worried. <laughs> yeah. The fact, that, the fact that that man could possibly be given nuclear codes, who, I mean, there, there was an excellent video. We will get... Batman's great. There we go. Right, now we're back on track. Um, but, like, there was a video of, um, um, of the Black Lives Matters protesters coming onto the... Like... Uh, um, going to the the rallies, like a Hillary and a Trump rally. Now, Hillary, the Black Lives Matters, they go to her, and she gives them a platform. She gives them a platform to speak on. She's like, you've come all this way. You're interrupting my my rally. You've clearly got something important to say. Uh, Trump just orders security. Not, doesn't listen, doesn't listen, you know. And if you're scared of a few protesters, you shouldn't have the nuclear launch codes. I'm sorry, that's not okay. Because I don't want there to be some sort of dinner... <laughs> where maybe he says hello to someone and they can't hear him properly and he's like, we've got to nuke China. We've got to do it. You know, like, fuck that noise. That's not okay. That's not cool. Because as much as I want to live in a post-apocalyptic wasteland, because I think my talents probably lie more in that and also my general <laughs> appearance, because as we both know, I look like I've wandered out of a thicket. Um, <laughs> I don't really want to do that. I don't really want to do that. It did give me a great idea for a for a, a comic though that I'm kind of working on at the moment. Okay. There we go. I've brought it back. I've brought it back to nerdiness. <laughs> um, yeah, post post apocalyptic billboard salesman. Wow. Uh, yeah. Because because in in the um, yeah they, they kind of like well, well fuck it I'll, I'll tell I'll tell the world. Um, you heard it here first. Copyright Mike Orvis. If I see any of you lot, uh, if I see any stories like this, you'll be like, well, actually, this was on a podcast ages ago and it's property of YouTube. But anyway. Um, it's uh, the rapture happens and all the good people go to heaven uh, but instead of all the bad people being like fire and brimstone they're just left on earth right to, to fight like because because Neil Gaiman said hell is other people um, and that really kind of made me think oh that would be cool like what, the, what if the rapture happened and like a third of the population not even that maybe a sixth of the population uh, ascended um, and it wasn't based on like whether they whether they worship God or anything. It was literally just based on their merit. So obviously there's no children apart from like a few right little pricks. Um, <laughs> the like, guy, the guy, the kid who keeps them coming round my house on a Monday and pressing the buzzer, and I'm all excited because I think I'm getting a parcel, and all it is is a little kid giving me sass at the door. Oh, <sighs> buddy, really? Yeah, big time. And you, you think, think you, it's your Thai bride, and it's just some yeah, like, oh, damn it, just this little kid just sitting there giving me the finger and running off, and I was like, you. You little shit, <laughs> and he gets me every like, time. Oh, yin yang, is every that time. You? <laughs> so basically, yeah, I, I hope he's on he's on Earth as well. Yeah, a little shit bag. <laughs> um, but but I kind of thought like, what were the what are the oldest jobs? Like if we if we regressed, what would be the oldest jobs? And the oldest jobs are are, are prostitution and advertising because you needed to know where the whores were. Um, so I like the idea that there's this company that's running the billboards. So you can you can pay them a certain amount of money, whatever the currency is. Then I haven't really worked it out, and they'll put your ad up. So like this billboard company is still working; it's all, it's all still working. But obviously, when you're a billboard salesman, not only are you selling to people because the phone lines still work, everything still like works because it's just run by assholes. Um, so like you know, you might get a call as a billboard salesman and be like, oh yeah, um, you've got a meeting with Mrs. Smith at five, but also Raiders are trying to take down uh, the billboard on Fifty Fifth Street. So you've got to like get your Glock and <laughs> and go down on a motorbike and take out the Raiders before getting to your seven o'clock meeting. Um, and I really like that idea that like as an action salesman, like the the idea of the salesman, and and they would have ranks. So you go like the closers and the sharks. They'd off, they'd have different ranks within the business. So essentially, it's like kind of like run like the mafia. It's like organized crime, but but it's legitimate. They're just selling ad space. So if you're looking for a lot, a lot, a loved one, or you've you've started a new settlement, you know, in another in another town, then you can advertise there for people to come and work there. And yeah, yeah, I just think it's a really cool idea. But I don't really want to be a post-apocalyptic billboard salesman yet. Please, Donald Trump. <laughs> okay, so. We're, we've done our political. Well, that's wasted we've done, fifteen minutes. We've I done a thing. We, we've used our word of the day, meritocracy. I think that might be the name of the uh, the name of the podcast, um, <laughs> meritocracy. Um, so yeah, uh, we'll move on to our news section. So uh, what, what news have you got for us? Well, Mr. I just Roberts? did. Trump was on fat. No, I'm joking. Um, it's not really. It's not really news. Can I? I like. I'm a bit. I'm a bit. Um, I'm a bit pissed off. Okay. Um, with Street Fighter Five. And I know this game came out a while ago, but the uh, it was unfinished then when it came out, and Capcom all but admitted that it had come out 
unfinished so I wasn't going to pick it up until it come some semblance of, of being finished and it was one of the main reasons I switched from Xbox to PS uh, to PlayStation because I was like this is an exclusive I really love Street Fighter I've got a really like endearing story as to why I got back into Street Fighter but I'll save that for another time um, but but it was quite a personal reason as to why I got back into playing Street Fighter it helped me kind of unite with, with one of my friends who I couldn't do the thing we used to do together it's not like a sex thing <laughs> um, so, so yeah, like I was really looking forward to Street Fighter Five, and I, and I picked it up a couple of days ago because um, they're like, yeah, the story mode is there now, and, and the game's nearly finished, and it's not, it's not fucking finished. So my my complaint, Matthew, my my, um, and, and and I mean, if you want to talk about like the news of it all, we could talk about No Man's Sky, but I've done that on every other website I've no, no, written for, away. so never good. mind. Um, but but. AAA games companies releasing unfinished games and selling them for full price. And early access games selling DLC. I'm looking at you, Ark Survival Evolved. Like, that's not fucking cool. Neither yeah, of those things are okay. That seems to be more of a thing these days. Well, they'll just sort of fire out a half-finished game and then go, oh, there's going to be lots of DLC. Yeah. And we all moan about it, but then we buy them and then buy the DLC. I Absolutely. Think we need to make a stand. Go, yeah, fin- well, the- finish the fucking game first, goddammit. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. I mean, uh, we as geeks have forgotten the power of the wallet. Like, we really have. Now that geek is chic and we essentially run culture, and that's only going to last for like another maybe 10, 15 years if we're lucky, and then we'll have to wait another 20, maybe 30 years before it becomes revisionist and cool again, um, we need to start voting with our wallets. If you, you know, if you don't, if you don't, if you want a game to be finished, don't buy it when it's, when it first comes out and you know it's being unfinished. If you, if you want to, you know, play an early access game and they start trying to hawk DLC, don't buy the fucking DLC. Don't buy it. If you don't buy it, people stop making it. Because what... And I've, I've been on this rant before on this podcast, conversely, is that what people seem to forget, Matt, is that is the industry part of the music industry or the entertainment industry or the games industry. You forget about the industry part. They are trying to make money. Yes, they might make good music. They might make a good game. They might make a good film or a comic. That, to the suits, is subsidiary. As long as it sells, that's all they care about. That's all they care about. Look at Fight Club 2. It's a pretty terrible story. Um, Our own curmudgeon Andy Haig wrote about it. Um, He was very unhappy with it. But everyone bought it because there's a film. Everyone bought it because Chuck Palahniuk has got an incredible reputation. Um, And that's all the suits care about. They're not going to be like, oh, this is garbage. Let's not market it. Um, They're just going to... This is going to do it. I've, I think I've chilled out a lot since I've become 27. This is <laughs> like I'm being a lot more explanatory than I am ranty. <laughs> I like it. So um, it's good. I know it's, cool. it's tempered my flames. I need yeah. to. I need to like talk about minions or something. Yeah. Like, fucking. No, but yeah, punching people. I think the you're right in that. I th- uh, there's a prime example for myself is I've we've got a gaming group for like uh, tabletop games, and li- literally daily somebody's having a moan about the price of Games Workshop um, miniatures and things like that. But yeah. then when new miniatures come out, we're, you know everybody goes out and buys the boxes and buys yeah. everything, but yet still moans about the price and stuff. And it's yeah. like you were saying, at some point you've got to sort of maybe make a stand and go, look, no, we're not going to pay this amount of money for when we can get it a lot cheaper. And you've got to start going to other companies and stuff like that, going to try and find alternatives instead of just going, well, that's all I've got. And I'm, you know that's what I'm going to buy. Yeah. Because, you know, because, like you said, companies will just go, well, these geeks might not be happy, but they're still paying for it, yeah. and they'll still buy their stuff. So it's true. Like, I sit there and I buy loads. I moan about it because I'm like, oh, it's well expensive. I can get it cheaper somewhere else. But because it's easy, I'll, I'll do it. And that's yeah. I'm just I'm just eating out of their hand, basically. Absolutely. And uh, Games Workshop have just had a falling out with Fantasy Flight, haven't they? Yes, that's my piece of news. Oh, okay, cool. Let's let... Good that, segue. Nice, well nice done, segue, Mike. yeah. That's my, that's my piece <laughs> of news. We... Um, we, I mentioned this in uh, our last podcast, but obviously because uh, Sean, 
didn't record his audio. Oh, uh, oh Sean. Um, we'll I'll discuss it again. But yeah, um, obviously two of the biggest um, tabletop and uh, board gaming uh, companies who used to be sort of kind of in bed together, Fantasy Flight and Games Workshop, are no longer going to um they're no longer fellow djs yeah they're never they're not fellow fellow djs as of i think february of next year they will cease uh, fantasy flight will cease to do anything with any games workshop ip in it and that's such a shame for me it's a massive mistake yeah um just because fantasy flight you know i know games workshop started doing board games you know of hero quest uh talisman uh, space crusade things like that uh space hulk and then they moved, they just focused on the sort of the tabletop side of things. But Fantasy Flight are so good at board games and card games and things like that. They've had years and yeah. years of experience. And they even progress the Games Workshop IP forward and they give it a good backstory. You know, we play Rogue Trader, the um, uh, the RPG. No, 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 that's a that's a show on BBC Two. <laughs> what? Rogue Trader? Which, yeah, oh, yeah, Rogue oh, Traders. Yeah. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But we, we we play rogue trader where I'm a rogue trader, uh, and it just the you know it's they're so you just good go at around it. people's houses doing cowboy build work. Yeah, we're just like yeah, we're like fit oh, cameras darling, and stuff. Yeah, I mean, I'll fix your fascists and fittings, but it's going to cost you. Oh, that's, oh, what, that's what, what I call a teeth dryer, love. Yeah, <laughs> but um, yeah, and I and I was trying to think about it, and I was like, there's no way. I just don't think Fantasy Flight. No, I don't know any. I don't know any different. But I just, I don't think Fantasy Flight would have cancelled that because it's a good earner for them. Yeah, uh, it was a good earner for GW. I think GW got a lot more sort of uh, more people got into their products because of Fantasy Flight. But I have a feeling that because Games Workshop went, holy shit, they're selling a lot of board games with our IP. We can do that, and they've started releasing. Like whenever I'm not, I'm not sure if you're up on your Games Workshop stuff, but um, now they're releasing um, starter sets which are like mini board games. So yeah. you'll get a starter set of like the Death Watch, which is basically Gene Stealers and Death Watch, and you've got new rules and you've got tiles for a board game. You've got the um, Betrayal at Calth, which is like a 30k um, starter box set, but again you've got tiles, you've got dice, you've got cards and stuff. It's like a little mini board game. Yeah. They're bringing out lots of little board games for their tabletop, which. Yeah, fine, I understand. It makes sense because, you know, they're trying to get people into the board game. It's cheaper, they can get some miniatures, and then they can play the tabletop version of it. But it's just not the same. It doesn't have the same sort of feeling as a Fantasy Flight game and who they do it so well. Yeah. And I think they're going to shoot themselves massively in the foot for this because, you know, they. I just don't think they have what it takes. I know Games Workshop have been doing it for, for many years, but they're a tabletop company now yeah and i think fantasy flight and they had a good sort of they had a good sort of synergy going on and mm-hmm. that as of february next year that's not going to happen and it's annoying because I've, there's i've got a lot of the 40k type games from fantasy flight like uh relic and uh, forbidden stars and conquest conquest which is a, a like a um competitive card game and they're a not gay gonna... competitive card game. Yeah, I get a gay competitive card game. No, a competitive card game. Oh, and um, it is not going to have any expansions anymore. So that's it. And I doubt yeah. Games Workshop are going to do it anymore. So that's upset me. And Forbidden Stars, which is a game that could have expansions, isn't going to get any expansions. And um, that's annoying. And you know what the issue is? That you know, Fantasy Flight are just going to go. Meh, it's fine. We've got Star Wars. And then, <laughs> of e- course, e- yeah, yeah, we've got Star Wars and the X Wing. Um, X Wing and coming up the Armada and stuff have overtaken, yeah, like forty k assault as well. Yeah. And Imperial, you know, they've started to overtake Games Workshop, and I think Games Workshop are worried and feeling that they need to sort of compete. And instead of just kind of just going, look, fine, we don't need to compete. We can use that to help ourselves. Yeah. But the thing, is, the thing is, mate, right? Um, Games Workshop, classic, classic. Their, their 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 hero's folly is their greed. I mean, it always has been. I, I know a guy who uh, who used to work for Games Workshop, and he and he he knew a couple of the, sort of the up and ups. And I don't know whether it's the same way you are, but round my way down in down in a saf, um, all the all the Games Workshop um, shops have changed their name to Warhammer. Um, and the rumor goes that the reason they've changed these names is because they sort of want to dis- disassociate the brand of Games Workshop because it's been so 
are so reviled <laughs> because it's because it's such a bad reputation. They've they've changed the name of their shop so people can walk in and go, oh, this is they sell Warhammer, but they're not Games Workshop, and they are. Well, I, actually, I've seen that. Um, there's no, there's none that I've seen sort of in Manchester. There's still Games Workshop, but I've seen a few photographs of places named Warhammer, and that makes yeah. sense. That does make sense, and it, it's a shame. You know, um, it is a shame. Like uh, Leonard, who sort of does stuff for us sometimes, he used to be a manager for Games Workshop in Manchester. Now he enjoyed working for them and stuff, but I think he understood that you know it was a big sort of money grab, and they didn't have a lot of time for the the punters. Saying that, yeah. more recently, um, more recently, I think they've realised that the community is is a big thing because they've set up a new Facebook group. Um, they're starting to ask people what they want to see. Yeah. They're sort of getting feedback and things. They're doing more videos and stuff. And I think um, what they're looking to do is like, uh, do you know much about Fantasy Battle? Uh, the Fantasy Battle at all? No, not at all. No. Right, so basically what happened, the, the games works out of two main games. They've got War, uh, Warhammer 40k and Warhammer Fantasy Battle. Um, Warhammer Fantasy Battle wasn't doing too well, and so they rebooted it. So they basically did this thing which was called uh, The End Times, where the Warhammer world effectively got torn asunder by lots of um, fighting. Um, gods came back, Sigmar came down, all kinds of crazy shit happened. And then they basically revamped it and turned it into Age of Sigmar. Right. And basically a new game completely, and it's more along the lines of 40k, but it's completely simplified, and it's they've made they've changed so many different mechanics. You can use all the models you had previously, but okay. they've changed all the mechanics, and they've they've like it's completely different. And I have a feeling that they may do that with 40k because if you think about it, the rules, it's on its seventh edition at the minute. 40k, yeah. um, Fantasy Battle, I think, was on its eighth from what I remember, 8th edition. Um, So they um, are going to basically do a... Because there's lots of talk about bringing back Primarchs, like uh, Lehman Russ and things like that, and, um, you know, chaos coming through and stuff. And I have a feeling they're going to make a massive change again for 40k, and they need to, because it's been the same for... 20 odd years and they've had different versions but it's been the same game one person takes one turn the other person takes another turn you hope you don't die in turn one and it's been <laughs> like that for years um and you know as much as i play the game it's frustrating because they could they could move the times initiative steps you know things like that and stuff which they do in, in age of sigmar so fingers crossed they'll do that and if they do they might be onto a winner but if they just keep the way they are fantasy flight are going to overtake them and uh, they are going to go the way of uh, the dodo especially especially with kickstarter yeah. kickstarter so many indie games coming oh, out i've uh, i've bought this year alone uh, before i moved house and i'm now bereft of all cash um i've backed s- uh, five or six yeah the miniatures t- games yeah, and it, it's so weird. Like you look at them, and go, "Wow, this is really good." Uh, you get obviously you're getting lots of extras and things like I've I've backed Mantic are doing a um, Walking Dead miniatures yeah. game, so I've backed that. I'm getting that through. They've done all kinds of cool stuff, and you get lots of extra miniatures and stuff. Like, wow, why would I buy Games Workshop stuff at you know stupid amounts when I could sort of go an equally awesome looking game from. Uh, from Mantic or from uh, Private Ear Press or something like that, yeah. and uh, it's all kickstarted, and so I'm getting bonuses. So it, it make it makes sense, and that's where they have to watch out because if they don't sort of go with the times and be a bit more interactive with their fans, they will lose out and they will um, they will go. Yeah, absolutely. and it'll be it'll be, it'll be a shame because they've been around for so long. They've been a part of my life since you know. My geek life started with Games Workshop. You know, I'm right. the first the Space Marines when I was four years old. First edition Rogue Trader. My dad bought it for me. That is how my that what's got me on the road to who I am today. And yeah. if they were if they were to go, you know, I would say that's your own fault. But it would be a sad day. Yeah, absolutely. But I mean, it's it's um, you know, it's it's it is unfortunate. But when you have these long standing institutions, they they sometimes do struggle to to change because. They have now that, uh, and I've used the phrase already today. Now that geeks become chic, it's 
that they don't know what to do with the newfound popularity with with the increase of fans and and unfortunately all it seems that Games Workshop is interested in is dollar signs mm. so they're just like oh up the prices up the prices more people are interested in it the board game the, the board gaming community uh, has has seen a massive rise so now the tabletop community will see some of that some of that money and, and now sweet let's do it you know I, I bought my I bought my friend um, for the Lord of the Rings uh, strategy um, game I, I bought her a Radagast all right. uh, figure and he was he had all the all the rabbits you know in the sleigh <laughs> yeah, so it's adorable um, but it cost me like 40 quid That's uh, yeah That's and, it, and like, I wanted to get her like a few figures um, but you know I, I was poor so I had to like I had to just get her this Radagast and she was over the moon she was really she was really happy about it she's um, you know her um, her husband actually worked on the uh, worked on the Lord of the Rings strategy game um, I've probably mentioned him on here before Kevin Kevin Barrowcloth Right, if yeah, yeah. you uh, just going to quickly plug him, he has a YouTube channel called Mithaeron. He plays uh, horror games. I occasionally appear on there as well, so go and check that out. Anyway, <laughs> um, it's uh, yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy uh, that I don't understand how it's 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 limiting almost. You know, because I would imagine that if you wanted to get people into games, you'd start them, you start them off young. You know, yep. like the porn industry, you start them off young. Um, you get <laughs> that's a different rant, but yeah, you, you, it's true. That's who they market to. But again, it's psychology. Um, yeah, you start them off young, so you get like starter sets. Like, wh- where's the where's the fucking beginners game for like a tenner? You know, with a few with a few fog- figures, and maybe they're not the same quality. I'll tell you who does that really well? Whiz Kids with Hero Clicks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, 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 I <laughs> fucking hell. I was really interested in Hero Clicks. So what's this all about? This is really cool. And then you could buy a starter set for twenty quid. Um, and I actually got a, a two player version of the game before I did a Captain America um, was it Winter Soldier um, version of the game for I think it was like eight quid in Toys R Us. That was literally on the impulse aisle. I was like, oh fuck it, I'll give Hero Clicks a go. I guess. Um, nearly nearly one hundred and fifty pounds later, I've got a shoebox full of. Of fucking figures, and that's not on. That's not on. That's on top of uh, what other people have bought me. Like um, uh, my ex bought me the full range of the Watchmen figures for it. Um, you know. So, but again, twenty quid, you can be playing the game. It's right there. It's sorted. You've got all the rules you need. There's a basic game. You know, totally accessible. Terrible paint jobs, but totally accessible. Yeah. Um, for for any for any age range. Whereas. When I was a teenager, I saw people playing uh, Warhammer, and I went, "That looks really complicated." And the kind of people that are playing it aren't the people that want to associate with me. <laughs> so I'm just gonna—I don't want to upset the Uber nerds. So I'm gonna leave yeah, and not I think, get involved with that. I think there there is an issue with um, Warhammer geeks who are just a bit over zealous about their love of the game and yeah. people and they they get a bit elitist about it and it sort of puts other people off like it, it used to put me off until i could i understood the rules and i started you know you can you could stand your ground with them but you know you can understand why you know maybe girl there's big there's a big push to try and get more girls playing it and stuff because there's a lot of female characters in the game yeah there's, there's female races and stuff but they don't play because they're put off yeah. by the nerds who who are just being dicks. And if I'm if I'm if I'm correct, the female characters since day dot have worn the same armor as the male characters, right? Yeah, so you've got the um yeah. you've got the um uh the sisters of, of battle or I can't remember they've renamed them uh now, but you've got them and obviously Eldar have female characters, mm. um, you know, Howling Banshees, um, you know, some of the main characters in the books and stuff are female female assassins and things like that. So there's a lot it's not because it's a ma- you know, a male centric game. Yeah. And you know, there are a lot of sort of female characters in there. It's just that the people who play it can be knobs. And I know that completely. I play it quite regularly, and you know you have a really good game with your mates and stuff. But you, if you, all it takes is from some dickhead to be a you know really be RC about a a small rule, or you know he'll literally just go, oh no, you'll find that you I have to be, I want it, and you're just like fuck off, dude. Seriously, it's a game. Get over it. And you know, describing exactly what the reason why I left Magic: The Gathering. 
Yeah, yeah. It's, that's it. That, yeah. that we're sort of going off on a tangent here, but it, I, that annoys me. That sort of elitism within geek culture frustrates me so much. For people who um, have probably struggled their whole lives trying to um, be accepted or you know be in, in a bigger group and stuff, they yeah. treat they treat others just as badly as they were probably treated themselves mm-hmm. and um that frustrates me really annoys me oh you know? massively yeah yeah really annoys me but um yeah okay so um we've, we'll we'll move on okay. um we'll move on to something else um so recommendations mike what have you got to recommend Oof. us what have i got to recommend um I'm just, just, I'm just, I'm looking around my new house, and I'm you, just thinking. You, you have. Let, let let's do another. You, you, you like your self promotion. You have a something that you're a part of. Oh, Kickstarter. I, I guess I should. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. I say so. For the last seven years, no, no, no. Since I read The Watchmen, and I was, I was pretty late to reading The Watchmen. I was about seventeen, I think. Maybe even later. Maybe eighteen. Um, I wanted to write comic books. I never thought I was really good enough and, and kind of like have struggled with imposter syndrome for a long time of just like, I fucking, if I get any kind of accolade or praise, I'm just like, nah, I don't really deserve that. So I'm just going to ignore that. Um, but, but yeah, I've wanted to be a comic book writer, especially for a while. And I kind of ignored it for a few years and then came back to it. And then um, I've got a web comic on the go at the minute and about 70 other fucking comics that I can't find a fucking artist for because they want £7 million up in front and that's totally fine but I don't have £7 million at the moment <laughs> anyway I finally found an artist and there's been a there's been a comic that I've been following for about three years now about the same time that I joined Geek Pride actually um, called Torso Bear right. Torso Bear is Toy Town uh, Film Noir it, it's Toy Story meets um uh, meets what's the uh, Chinatown it's right. it's you know it's um, it follows the, the story of a Ruxby bear if you know what a Ruxby bear is the little dudes with tapes in there um, he's a detective um, in the in Toy Town and he's trying to follow the, uh, the a serial killer essentially called the called the copycat killer and he uh, he, he sees disembodied bears and things and, and it follows uh, it's an anthology of stories written by a myriad of writers um, I applied to be on the second one because I, I got really friendly with Brett Yuren, um, who I did an interview for last year on Geek Pride YouTube. So if you look probably to the right, you'll see it along the right hand side. Uh, give yep. that a look. You see two large hairy men rather in love with each other. It's beautiful. <laughs> um, but yeah, I applied to be on the second one, and my story was just a little bit too sort of on the fringe of what they were looking for. Um, so I kind of put my towel between my legs and was like, no, oh, man, okay. And, and I didn't kind of let it, like, it affected me, but it didn't let me, like, I didn't stop. So then created my webcomic, which will come out at some fucking point. Again, money. Um, so this kind of went back and forth. And then I heard that the third one was, was going to be uh, going out there and he asked for people to submit their pitches. And I submitted a pitch. I won't spoil the story now. Um, but ipso facto, I'm in. Um, I'm, I'm going to be one of the writers along with an incredibly talented local artist to me, uh, Cass Gregory who I brought on board and just said look if you're going to use me, get this, get this girl on board because she's fucking incredible um, another plug for her if, uh, if, if uh, you like children's books she wrote something called Sausage and Chips um, she did the illustrations for It's Adorable uh, I think the first one's called Sausage and Chips in Space, uh, I could be wrong but go and check out their Facebook page, it's lovely um, but anyway, she she's doing the artwork uh, for 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 my story, and it's 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 looking fucking eye wateringly beautiful. Um, but it is being kickstarted right now. Uh, there are about thirteen days left, uh, twelve days now actually. Um, we are just over halfway funded, about sixty one percent to our funding. Um, so even if if you can spare just a pound, um, it would be absolutely wonderful if you can, because if we are funded. I'm going to have a book with my name in it that I, I wrote <laughs> and that's going to blow my mind I'm going to cry I, I will cry um, <laughs> and maybe maybe I'll um, maybe I'll film it for, for Geek Pride um, just me being like that wouldn't be <laughs> the first time you've cried on camera for us um, when did, oh yeah no I did I did I totally did that yeah <laughs> fuck you Neil Gibson and your, and your writing style um, yeah I've done some weird shit for you Matt like yep. I'm just thinking back I've been naked for you. 
I travelled to Manchester to not have any photos taken apart from like <laughs> random ones that never made the calendar. They were never meant to, but yeah. Yeah, I, I did um, it. I did it. I did an edit for you in Gearston. I was quite proud of. Yeah, it was lovely. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I've I've done some weird shit. I've crouched for half an hour to see Sigourney Weaver to take a picture of her for your Twitter account. Um, if, <laughs> I've done some pretty some pretty strange things. It's been a been a weird old road with Geek Pride, but it's it's opened doors for me that I think I think I never would have uh, I never would have got to without without you lot. So I guess oh. I guess I guess, guess you're all right. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, oh. go go to, to anyway go to Kickstarter. Type in Torso Bear T O R S O B E A R. Um, it's called Back on the Blocks. I think um, <laughs> I might be wrong. Uh, if I am, sorry, Brett. Um, but yeah, check that out. And even if you can chuck a quid, you will be helping realise my dream. And that would like fucking make my year if I could end end this year going. Oh shit, I'm I'm in a comic. So yes, please do that, Matt. It, what's your news? Yeah, if, if if we do that, I feel that we may have to have a dedicated podcast just for Mike to talk about it on his own if that happens. Because I feel like you'd be that happy that you just you be you just continually talk about it. Um. Yeah, I probably, I, I probably would. It's um, like the best thing ever, man. You're yeah. So, well, you're I, so... I fear it might. I fear it might spur me on to do more, which sounds like a sounds like a good thing. But like, I've got so many plates spinning at the minute. I'm just gonna be like, oh, I'm do just you, the right comics. Do you do that? Like, I get to a thing where something will just pop into your head, and you go, "Holy shit, I can do that. I'm gonna do that." And then yeah. you, you you forget about the the five other things that you're currently doing yeah because you know you need to do that thing straight away I, right now i have well I, the way i've combated that is i've got an app on my phone just a, just a note app well i've got hang on a minute i will tell you right now let's go to local notes click out of that 59 notes at the minute um taken over the last well since since may of last year of just Either their song ideas, or their comic ideas, or their like their their like article ideas of shit. I'm just like I'm, I will write that at some point. Uh, notes, other things like that. Um, workout schedule, things I'm going to do drum covers for. Um, interestingly, um, with what I was talking to you about, um, I we were talking you were talking about um, for podcast ideas um, on the fifth of July, 2016. At thirteen twenty nine, I came up with the idea of pitch please, um, which was like basically you get creative together and then you pick a you pick a concept and then you both you go away for like five minutes, come back and then you do your pitches and then the the host will vote on who's got the best pitch. And I had uh, several ideas. Um, that, Ch- that's a good one. I like yeah, that one. Yeah. Well, I mean, kind of Ben Ben Fee of of Geek Pride fame. Uh, came up with an idea and it, he was basically having this session where he's like new podcast ideas I've got this this and this and I was like I thought of that one in May I thought of that one in June and that one in 2014 he's in your um, mind yeah um, so so like for example and maybe maybe I shouldn't say this because maybe it will be a podcast I mean I'd, I'd quite like to to host it um, but um, Chuck Norris versus communism um, <gasps> dude that uh, dude you're in my mind I was <laughs> just about to talk about Chuck Norris versus communism Okay, I swear to God, that's weird. That was going to happen. <laughs> um, Mario, uh, Mario Brothers gritty reboot and a Small Soldiers gritty reboot, which I'm pissed off about, by the way, because the whole reason this podcast was going to become a thing is because I I done a I done a pitch on gentlemanly chats. Um, it was either the Clown Wars, it was the end of the Ninja Turtles. I can't remember now. No, no, no it was the end of the it was the end of the new Star Wars trilogy. Um, but like a really dark. I hate using the word edgy because it makes me sound like the 1975 going we're going to spend all our golden globes money on drugs oh we're so, we're so different and edgy oh, oh Led Zeppelin Led Zeppelin have you heard of them fucking grow up um, anyway where was I uh, yeah so so uh, yeah I, I came up with this thing and I was like oh yeah we should we should just we should pitch the idea so I, I spent a day writing out this uh, small soldiers pitch that because I was like who the fuck remembers small soldiers like no one no one remembers small soldiers um, which is a film that came out in like '96, I think. Yeah. Um, and and I had an idea that like uh, basically it carried on, but it got like really dark. So the soldiers <laughs> regrouped. Like one of them woke up from being uh, from being the, from the EMP blast. Like they got thrown in the trash, and then they were stuck in this trash pile for ages. And then uh, the general woke up again and was like, "No, no, no, we're at war. 
we are at war. So he just assembles all these other toys and puts the chip, starts learning how to replicate the chip using the junkyard um, like technology, and then starts putting it in all the all the old abandoned toys, and then they start to take over the city, and but they're like brutally murdering murdering people <laughs> and stuff. Um, wow. <laughs> yeah, and the Gorgonites are just like living in the fucking forest, just like oh we're cool, we're just everything's great, we live we're living in harmony in nature and stuff. So then there'd be like these brutal fights where the Gorgonites are riding on the backs of like squirrels and shit and, 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 and being like, oh, our ways are peaceful, but they're the only guys that can kind of uh, be it. But anyway, um, I'd heard through the grapevine that uh, it's, it's currently being pitched because they're about to lose their license to it because it's been about, uh, when's, when was 96? Was 96 20 years ago? 20 years ago? Fuck, Fuck me. I know. Um, <laughs> no, it wasn't. It was last year. I yeah, was seven. No. <laughs> Everything was brilliant. Um, <laughs> Batman Forever had just come out. Wow. Um, yeah, so... Um, yeah, but I, I've, I've heard through the grapevine that it's being pitched currently and I should probably not bother pursuing it. But I did email the dude because uh, he was the dude who did um, Gremlins, I think, the director. Oh, okay. And just going, please, I'd really like to do this. Weirdly enough, I didn't hear anything back. <laughs> um, we never know. You, can, you know, you can but try. But yeah, but maybe, maybe, I'll just, maybe I'll just release the pitch online. But that's where I came up with the idea of pitch, please. It's just like... If you've already got an idea for a pitch, maybe maybe you can do the competition at the start and then the end of the podcast can be one person going, here's my idea for something completely different. Here's, here's my idea for things. So if you've got an idea, you can write in and someone can explain it. Or if you're local then, uh, or part of Geek Pride or you want to get involved, then you can kind of call, call in, so to speak, and, and do that. I think that would be a cool idea. Anyway, yep. that's a random tangent. Um, <laughs> what's, what's your recommendation? Well, yeah, well, you, you've mentioned it already. Uh, well, there, basically, I've got two. Uh, one, the, our resin Eeyore, Mr. Haig, recommended to me recently. Um, but I'm going to talk, because you've mentioned it already, um, Chuck Norris versus Communism on Netflix. Yeah. Um, what a what a cool documentary. Yeah. I was sort of. Um, I was my friend was what my housemate was uh, sitting there watching Netflix and um, I was like, "What are you watching?" And he's like, "Chuck Norris versus Communism." I was like, "Holy shit! That's going to be like <laughs> Delta Force or something. That's going to be <laughs> hilariously bad but good." So I sat sat down and it it's not. It's a documentary about yeah. video piracy in uh, Eastern Europe during the eighties. And um, how this lady um, does the dubs over it, and they, they're smuggling all these videos in <laughs> for people, and they all huddle in their houses and and talk about it. But it's so good. It's just like wow, you don't you don't you didn't realize. Imagine growing up in the eighties, you know, and not having sort of like Schwarzenegger films and stuff. Yeah. The, the hilarious thing I found about it was apparently she wouldn't swear, so she put in like you know her own little words and stuff, and, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but that's a really good um, that's a really good documentary if you're on Netflix definitely yeah. check out um, Chuck Norris versus communism because it, it's not what you'll expect it to be but it is yeah. it's very it's very it's like a dramatized documentary and it's very Excellent. good uh, second recommendation is one that mr. Haig uh, uh, pointed out to me the last week um, and it's called the resurrection of uh, Jake the Snake Roberts. Yeah. Um, do you? Uh, I'm not sure. Do you remember Jake the Snake Roberts as a wrestler? I I don't. I I know his story. I don't. I don't remember yeah. watching him particularly. Well, I I grew up. You know, when when I was sort of growing up as a kid, sort of it was like Breath of Hitman Heart, Ultimate Warrior, Hulk Hogan, Jake the Snake Roberts. Yeah, yeah. And um, so Randy Savage. Randy Savage. Yeah, yeah. So you had all those. Um, and obviously. He got into his drugs massively, into his drink massively, and he just went on a bender. And nobody sort of kind of heard from him. He'd do all these shitty shows where he was pissed half the time, and yeah. you know he wasn't getting paid very much. He lived in a shitty house and stuff. And it's all about this guy called Diamond Dallas Page. He was an old wrestler as well, and he's got this sort of yeah. like yoga sort of fitness thing. And he goes and because he's friends with um, Jake Snake, and he tries to well, he does. He, re he rehabilitates him, and it's about his struggle from you know being an addict. To sort of kind of being better, yeah. and you know, getting in with his kids, uh, getting back with his kids, and things like that. And it's it's ups and downs, you know. He'll be sitting there, he's fine, and he'll relapse, and he'll be pissed and things, and they'll get angry with them. But that's such a good. It's a really good documentary, and it it's one of these things because you see people um, that you know you obviously you looked up to when you were younger. And you see them as shells of their former self. Yeah. You know, it's like you know. Um, um, Prize, who used to be Vader and stuff. When yeah. you see him at conventions and things, even when you saw, you know, um, Kenny Baker, you know, um, 
you know, before he died and stuff, he, they were all, you know, obviously they're older, a lot yeah. older, and you see them and you go, one day these guys aren't going to be around anymore. Yeah. And it's sad, you know, because you don't, in your mind, they're still that character. They're still well, that strong, that huge character, and I mean, you I, see them. Sorry. No, 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 no. Um, I, I think I think that kind of leads into um, a kind of a broader a broader idea of uh, of what 2016 has been. I kind of came up with this theory, and I was, I was I'm, I'm a travelling salesman, so I do a lot of driving. Not in a David Brent way, though. Just in a like uh, across Sussex, Kent, and Surrey. Not like all the way to Ipswich, if you know. The song "Life on the Road" by David Brent. Um, <laughs> anyway, but Ricky Gervais, fucking Jamie, he's not a real person, Mike. Um, but like 2016 has been the year of nostalgia. It's it's been, and and that's because, uh, in my opinion, um, and again, I'm trying not to be political, but it's it's the year where the older millennials are now at the age where they're they're all fucking spitting out kids or refusing to spit out kids because of the current socio political landscape. Um, the young graduates are coming out to find, oh, we've fucking got no jobs. This is mental. Um, and the younger generation don't know what the hell's going on. So you've seen, and all our heroes are dying, and all our heroes are dying because um, there are heroes because the, the our, our age, I'm, I'm unfortunately the, the upper end of millennial, millennial. I'm on the cusp of millennial Gen Xer, but unfortunately I'm, I'm actually a, a millennial. Um, you know the films that I watched as a kid weren't the films at the time they were films from like 10, 20 years ago um, and now those people are dying so the, you've got this kind of general malaise of everyone going oh fuck all our heroes are dying so everyone's just diving back into nostalgia mm-hmm. add that to the infantilization of, of culture because geek has become chic because um, basically normies have misinterpreted liking Batman to I can now act like a child um, you've got this. You've got this. This heady mix of of nostalgia addicts and infantilized humans, um, especially in England. Um, and 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 now, like you look at marketing for the example I'm going to use is um, Halifax. Halifax have got have done a deal with Hanna Barbera. Their billboard ad at the moment are literally just Fred Flintstone going yabba dabba do, yeah, and then some that. and then some stuff. But like that's not smart marketing. That's not clever. I mean, it's totally smart for the moment. Um, but there's nothing clever about that. There's nothing nuanced. It's literally going, look at the thing. Look at the thing you remember when you were a child. Buy our stuff, <laughs> right? And, and that's because nostalgia is so effective. Look how good strange. Look how fucking culturally penetrative Stranger Things was. Oh, it's a man. monumentally wow. successful uh, wow. TV show. They're already filming season two. They're already filming season two. The fuck has been out for like what three months? Like it's it's so monumentally I I, popular. I, I think I could do another podcast just on the theory behind that that series and stuff like that. I am um, in a podcast that's coming out in two weeks' time on uh, uh, Gentlemanly Chats. Uh, I spoke with uh, Graham Waller and Jade Rose uh, about. Uh, we did a little bit about Stranger Things, and I, I had uh, my theory that um, well, f- fuck it. If you if, minor spoiler. I think that L is the monster, and yeah, I, I thought that I, I sort of had that view as well and stuff because it and, seems that she is um, she she eats a lot and yeah. the monster seems to be hungry all the time. Uh-huh. It always seems to be sort of kind of around when she's around and stuff. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I won't I won't go too too much into it because I don't want I don't want to get into spoilers and then you will get people right. You should have let us know. Yeah. But um, but yeah, so. The point, the point. I was trying to make a point. Uh, the point is, um, what what was your original thing? Sorry, <laughs> we were talking about. I spotted um, something shiny, and my brain just went. Oh, we were talking. We were talking about Jake and Stick, the resurrection of Jake and Stick. Yeah, Rose. yeah. So, so yeah. This idea that um, you know, all all the all the kind of pe- people are obsessed with the old. So this documentary has come out at exactly the right time. Um, but if you if you notice the pattern of what's going on at the minute, bands like Gunship, for example, uh, the the genre of vaporwave, this eighty centric uh, uh, style of music, uh, that that's that it's new bands doing old music. If you look at the style of the time as well, people are running around in fucking jumpsuits and, and yeah. shit. It's crazy. Um, so yeah, there is this weird revisionist kind of um, not revisionist. That's not the phrase I'm, I'm looking for. This kind of revival of uh, of the old and. 
that's why these documentaries are coming out at the moment. That's why they're so prevalent. That's why they're they're so culturally penetrating. Um, not to say that there's anything wrong with any of it, any of this. I'm just I'm just making a comment on society. Maybe it's something you'll notice now when you're driving um, driving around or, or listening to this podcast, doing the washing up or, or whatever you're doing. You might just think, ah, oh, yeah, maybe, maybe that's maybe that's a thing. Maybe that my corpus is onto something. I'm not always angry, ladies no, and gentlemen. No, no. Sometimes no. I'm reflexive, and I've had I've had a, I've had a very long week. <laughs> <laughs> right on that one, we're going to have to leave it. Um, I'm going to leave you one more thing. We're doing something random on our Twitter at the minute. Um, I thought it might what be... What a great quite... idea, Matt. It's so, yeah. it's so good. Where did you ever get this idea from? Because we're, I, I've started doing my RPG uh, with Ben again. Me and my friends do uh, a Rogue Trader RPG. Uh-huh. And I was just thinking, I was like, why don't we do something like that on Twitter? Like get Because I want to get more people involved Hang in Twitter on. and stuff. Is that, is that the story you're going with, is it? I know it's a bit weak, but I just thought I just wanted. I was I was busy. I'm always thinking. No, the point I'm trying to make, Matthew Geary, is that what? it was my fucking idea. <laughs> oh, really? Was yeah. It? So put on the group. I, I, I like. I'm I'm starting to look through the group now, and I won't find it. But if you look through the group, we were talking about Twitter. Someone said, "Oh, that dragon thing on Twitter was brilliant," and I said, "Why don't we do a choose your own adventure on Twitter?" Haig commented with, oh, probably because uh, nobody could be bothered to do it and it would, you know, everyone's lazy, blah, 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 blah. And then this thing went on, cut to a day later, and you're sharing on the Geek Pro community, hey, we're, uh, we're doing this thing where uh, we're doing a Choose Your Own Adventure. So, <laughs> and I was like, what a great idea. Where do, where, uh, where, what do you got that uh, from, mate? Do you know what, Mike, Mike, I actually honestly <laughs> thought you thought it was a good idea. Yes, I didn't I did. actually. No, I, I didn't. Did I didn't think think it, I didn't. Th- I didn't honestly. I I didn't intentionally uh, steal your idea. By the I way, I didn't think it, it was, was a great idea. That's yeah. why I came up with it. Uh, I'm sorry, Mike. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for plagiarizing and inadvertently plagiarizing your idea. But yes, in my mind, it was just. I'm playing an RPG. Why don't we do an RPG on Twitter? Yeah. And let let's do it anyway. So we'll we'll give credit where credit's due. <laughs> Mike's idea, Matt, obviously has plagiarised unwittingly. But yes, we're doing a Twitter thing. So if you get onto our Twitter at uh, it's just four slash um, Geek Pride one, and um, we're every Have you day. Still not got Geek Pride yet? Yeah, well, it, somebody else took Geek Pride. And Can't it's we just stupid, buy yeah. it off them? Yeah, uh, well, we'll have to. Can't we just but... send the boys round? Yeah. And by boys, Any... I mean my arms. Anyway, but. We're we're basically each day. Where I'm going to try and basically put a forward the story. So currently we've got a um, a guy who's walked into a bar and a dwarf has beckoned him over called Kilbara, and um, you our, our our character is now called Jeff because that's what the people thought would be a good idea to call our character. Brilliant. He's called Jeff, and we're currently sort of kind of uh, got our vote at the minute to see if he's going to be a mage or a warrior or a rogue or a priest. Last time I checked, uh, priest was not doing well. No, it's sort of I think currently rogue and uh, major. Excellent. At the, I think on the high. rogue. Yeah. So, so um, and I think you know just for something for engagement and just for a yeah. bit of a laugh. You know, I think it's a good idea. So um, check out uh, our, our Twitters. Um, get voting. Um, yeah. By all means, if you want to engage in the... Like, if people vote, but if people say, I want to do this, I'll even engage them and, and roll a dice for them. Um, you know, and give them a bad roll. And I'll give them the roll. So if it's a good roll, I'll give them something sort of half good. <laughs> if it's a bad roll, I will give you a bad result and okay. say something as well. So, yeah. So if you want to, if you want to engage in that, it helps us with our Twitter, and plus it's a bit of fun as Absolutely. well. Absolutely, and um, we actually ended uh, that that podcast episode I was talking about earlier with Stranger Things. Uh, we actually ended that episode with a, a twenty minute D and D session uh, that totally happened sort of on the fly, um, which is really fun with some background music and stuff. Um, so yeah, also if you if you like this podcast and you like the sound of my voice, uh, Matt is very occasionally on Gentlemanly Chats, but also uh, that's the podcast I do for Geek Pride, and uh, I try to get it out weekly. Sometimes life gets in the way, um, but mostly it's weekly. Um, <laughs> can I can I leave can I leave them with a conundrum that's been racking my racking my brain for the yeah, past? Yeah, go on then. Uh, yeah. Leave them the conundrum. It, it's sciency, which okay. is nice. Uh, so I've been thinking about parallel universes, and um, so so there are an infinite number of parallel universes if you if you adhere to the standard model of of parallel universes, and um, which means that there are an infinite number of universes that are exactly the same as this, and then there are also an infinite number of universes where it's exactly the same as this, but I say a different word than this one, 
pineapple. Um, but also, if there are, Matthew, an, uh, an infinite number of universes, that means that there is a universe where there isn't an infinite number of universes. My question to you is, where does that exist? Oh, you just blew my freaking mind! Ugh. That stuff when I think about stuff like that, mine <laughs> literally just does my head, and I will literally <laughs> stay up all night tonight <laughs> thinking about that and going, what the hell is going on? Right, anyway, with that, um, that is just going to melt my... <laughs> completely ruined you. Yeah, That's it fantastic. really is. Yeah, well, with that bombshell, we will have to leave it. I've been uh, Matt Geary. I am, have and will continue to be the legendary beard, Mr. Mike Orvis. And um, good eve, and we'll see you next week.